When I first saw Ratchet and Clank, I'm gonna be real, I didn't think much of them. Being someone whose first PlayStation um, device was a PSP, I sadly didn't have the luxury of playing through the series. Therefore, every game from it just seemed like another wacky space adventure. But now that I've done some research and am way more well versed with the series, I gotta tell you guys that I was wrong. This series is more than just two heroes beating up bad guys in space. We've got galaxy ending threats, full on cycles who wanna screw up the time space continuum and alternate universes. Mind you, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So sit back, grab some snacks, and enjoy as my conscious and I break down the full story of Ratchet and Clank. From the first game, all the way to Rift Apart. And we're not kidding about that snacks part. This shit about to be long AF. Hells yeah it is. Play that intro, son. So, before Ratchet & Clank became a franchise, they were just an idea from Insomniac Games. After the PlayStation 2's release back in 2000, the folks at Insomniac were sitting in their office thinking about what new heat they could bring to the table. One of the first projects they tried to work on was titled Monster Night, but that never passed the planning phase. Then they started working on another project called Girl With A Stick. Wait, wait, Girl With A Stick? What was the premise? Was she smacking people with branches? Not sure. All we know is that it was inspired by Tomb Raider and Legend of Zelda. This project ended up getting canceled too. But then someone proposed that they make a space adventure game. That led to the first draft of what is now Ratchet and Clank. This draft had a reptilian alien as a protagonist, and he'd go around the galaxy collecting weapons. However, Insomniac was like, wait, reptiles? You did that shit already with Spyro. So over time, the protagonist's design evolved until he became Ratchet. Along with the change came the creation of Clank. According to GameIndustry.biz, Insomniac wanted to make the game like an intergalactic buddy cop film. It would be like Lethal Weapon meets Saturday morning cartoons. Then in 2002, Ratchet and Clank released for the PlayStation 2. And fun fact, the game was built on the same engine used in Jack and Daxter. Naughty Dog actually lent them the engine because them and Insomniac were bros. But with all the development history out the way, let's move on to the in-game history. Our tale begins in the Solana Galaxy, on the planet of Velden, with the young Lombax Ratchet. This guy has big dreams of traveling around the galaxy, so he's been using his skills as a mechanic to build a ship for his journey. While he's adding the finishing touches, a robot made from a factory on the planet Quartu crash lands in the area. Ratchet confuses him for a robotic ignition system, the last part he needs for his ship, but the bot surprises him when he wakes up and shows the Lombax a chilling message. An alien species known as the Blarg can't live on their planet anymore because it's all messed up. So the Blarg chairman, Drek, decided to send a message to the galaxy telling everyone that he's going to destroy the planet Novalis in order to create a new one for his people. How are you just going to ruin the lives of a whole society like that and announce it to the galaxy like it's no big deal? The bot can't have that, so he asks Ratchet to take him to the legendary hero of the galaxy, Captain Quark. Ratchet accepts since the bot is the last thing he needs to power his ship, and with that they head off. Within the ship they finally introduce themselves, but the bot drops his whole serial number so Ratchet just calls him Clank for short. But little did they know that this short exchange will lead to a lifelong bond. The two travel through a few planets trying to find Captain Quark, and while on their journey they do some good, while getting into arguments non-stop. Hey, they kinda sound like us, Conscience. Nah nah, see, you get into arguments with me, I just win them. Their quest brings them to Blackwater City, where they finally find Quark. They tell him what's going on, and to their surprise, he commends them on all the good they've been doing in the galaxy on their way here. First game and this man is already calling Ratchet and Clank heroes? I don't know, seems kinda sus. That's cause it is sus. Quark is actually working with Drek as a spokesperson for the planet this guy is creating. So he tricks the friends into working with him, saying that he'll train them himself, then he betrays them by throwing a Blargian snaggle beast at them. I mean, technically that's still training. Yeah, but what's the point of training if this thing can kill them? Luckily though, they defeat the beast, but Ratchet is pissed. He didn't even want to be here in the first place, and he just got betrayed by one of his heroes. The Lombax tells Clank that he's done with the saving the galaxy crap. But Clank is like, bro, you really about to let this man Drek do everyone dirty? And don't forget, without Clank, Ratchet can't fly shit. So he reluctantly agrees to continue the mission with Clank. However, he's more focused on getting his revenge on Quark. They continue traveling and stopping Drek's attacks on other planets. Then they finally run into Quark and take him out. But while celebrating their win, our heroes find out that Drek is invading Gorda City on the planet Oltanis. Watching the scene snaps Ratchet out of his rage and makes him realize how wrong he was for just trying to get revenge. Innocent lives are being snuffed out because some dude just wants to make another planet. They need to do something. He finally stops being a dick to Clank, then they travel to Clank's home planet, Kortu. On this planet, they find out where Drek is. He's now trying to destroy Velden, Ratchet's home planet, in order to make room for his new planet. Ratchet's like, welp, definitely can't have that. 
all my shit is there. Then they fly over to the planet and find Drek in a giant mech suit. Here, Drek admits that he polluted his own planet to make more money. That's why he's making a new one. The fuck? And once this new planet is populated, he's gonna pollute it again. The fuck? After revealing this selfish ass plan, Ratchet and Clank beat the shit out of him and destroy his new planet. Yeah, screw your planet, bro. But the battle up to Clank losing an arm. It's all good though, cause now he and Ratchet are cool. The Lombax invites him over to his garage to fix his arm. And with that, Ratchet and Clank's first adventure comes to an end. Now this is where we get into the Ratchet and Clank movie that came out in 2016 along with the game that was tied to it. But none of that is canon. It's literally a retelling of the first game by Quark. And y'all know we can't trust that dude. So let's move on to the second game in the series, Going Commando. The bros are now galactic heroes. They had parades thrown for them, parties, the whole shebang. However, Ratchet is thirsty for a dangerous heroic mission. This is when a new mission throws itself right on his lap. The CEO of a company named Megacorp, Abercrombie Fizzwidget, yes, I'm serious, hits the duo of asking for their assistance. Megacorp has been working on something called protopets. They're these cute blue furballs that would make the perfect pet for anyone in the galaxy. However, someone stole the first protopet created, so Fizzwidget needs Ratchet to get it back. Ratchet gladly accepts, then he's recruited as a commando of Megacorp and goes through a mini training arc to learn everything he needs to complete this mission. Clank is not really trying to go on another their adventure so he's given a job as Megacorp's chief accountant and as a bonus he gets a dope ass apartment in Megapolis. How are you just gonna make somebody you just met head accountant of your company? Well Clank is a robot. Yeah a robot that does what he wants. Clank can just rob them blind and they wouldn't even know it. Shit don't make sense. Either way Clank is not on this mission for now meaning Ratchet is going solo. So he heads to the Bogon galaxy in order to find the protopet thief. While searching for the criminal and dealing with mercenaries from the Thugs for Less group, he finds out that his best bro got kidnapped by the thief. Ratchet can't have that, so he beelines over to where Clank's being held to save him. Once together, they realize this was probably the universe giving them a sign that they should team up like the last game and finish the mission cooperatively. Teamwork makes a dream work, baby. Together, they continue tracking down the thief, but as they travel through the galaxy, they slowly start to notice that Fizzwidget is a little off. Nah, this man seems sus as fuck. He uses made up words when he talks, and whenever he tries to help Ratchet, our boy ends up getting into more shit. Anyways, the duo eventually runs into the thief, and they steal back the protopet. They call up Abercrombie, hand over the pet, and you'd think that'd be the end of the story. But no, the dude takes the pet and just leaves him on the planet of Tabora. Clank is hella confused by this action, but Ratchet once again shrugs it off. Bro, the guy that ass crushed your ship, then ejected y'all out of his ship. How do you not find that at least a little sus? I was gonna say it's that anime shit here, but it dead isn't. Ratchet is just being kind of dumb right now. But while they're stranded, they're confronted by the thief, who accidentally reveals herself to be a Lombax named Angela Cross. After they tell her that they gave the protopet to Fizzwidget, she gets tight. She states that they just put the whole galaxy in danger. Then she hints checking out the Megacorp testing facility to see what's really going on. After getting a new ship, they make their way to the testing facility. Here they watch a video that shows the truth of the blue fur balls. These things are violent as fuck, and they just get stronger as they wild out. Megacorp plans on sending these pets out to families around the galaxy. Why? Why would you do that? So Ratchet and Clank are now aware of the menace against the Fizzwidget. They give him a call to talk it out because why would you release something like that? However, when they try to reach him, he just kind of ignores them. Sus. The man even gives them the wrong password when they try to enter another Megacorp facility and the defenses start attacking them. More sus. Later, they meet with Angela and she tells them that she actually used to work for Megacorp. She was a scientist who was trying to fix the violent problem with the protopets. However, Fizzwidget set an earlier release date for no reason. This leads her to believe that Fizzwidget is sus as fuck, just like we've been saying. The group decides on forgetting about the old man and dealing with the protopet problem themselves. The best way to do that is by taking out the original one located in Megacorp HQ. Once they make it, they find out that Fizzwidget is actually Captain Quark. This asshole is back. Yeah, and throughout the game, they were showing clips of his arc in the story. Apparently, he got arrested for trying to skip town after getting a fine of six billion bolts. But he broke out of prison and acquired enough money to start his new project. Go to another galaxy, release a menace, then come in to save the galaxy to rekindle his hero career. This man has problems. So the captain decides to go on TV and frame Angela, Ratchet, and Clang for creating the protopets. After that, he tries to quell the galaxy's fears by using a device called the Helixomorph to cure a protopet of its anger. And that backfires because Quark is an idiot. He puts the batteries in the device backwards, so it just makes the thing more angry and it mutates. It goes on a rampage, so Ratchet and Clang go knock it out before it goes destroying shit. And after this, Angela frees Fizzwidget and they cure all the protopets. As for Quark, he starts working for Megacorp as a test dummy. Serves him right. Now we move to the third game in the series, Up Your Arsenal. 
It's been some time since the last game, but apparently in between these games, Clank started a spy show called Secret Agent Clank, while Ratchet played as his butler. The game actually begins with them watching one of Clank's episodes. And my boy Ratchet Salty is hell about his role. After the show, they find out that Veldin, Ratchet's home planet, is under attack by this game's antagonist, Dr. Nefarious. This guy wants to turn everyone in the galaxy into robots because he just hates organic life forms. Ratchet and Clank can't have that, because that galaxy is their home. So together they travel back to the Solana galaxy and make it to Veldin. There they meet a bunch of the Galactic Rangers, and I guess Ratchet got that Black Air Force energy because the Rangers immediately assume that he's a sergeant. The duo helps the Rangers fight off Nefarious's troops, then they meet the Solana Galactic President, President Fironix. He commends them on their efforts, and even recognizes Clank from his TV show. My man got clout that spans multiple galaxies. The President tasks them with finding someone named Florana. He's the only person who beat Nefarious. They head out and find the guy, but it's actually Captain Quark. He lost his memory, so he now thinks he's a monkey. So the guy Galaxy's last hope is not only Quark, but Quark with no memory. Yup, shit sucks. But luckily after thwarting more attacks from Nefarious, they find a Quark vid comic they can use to restore Quark's memory. Once the captain regains his memory, the president assigns him as the leader of this whole Nefarious operation. Now fam, I get that Quark beat Nefarious back in the day, but this dude is a narcissistic, idiotic, washed up piece of garbage. Why would you put him in charge? Deadass, y'all could've just asked how to beat him. With Quark as a leader, they continue their fight against Nefarious, but Ratchet and Clank do pretty much all the work. Then Clank ends up getting kidnapped by Nefarious. I don't care if it wasn't his fault, but I blame Quark. Once he has Clank in his grasp, he admits that he's a fan of Clank because of his spy show. He calls Clank a hero to robots across the galaxy. But he says that he's wasting his potential with the organics he spends his time with. He's like, yo, my bot. Fuck them squishies, bro. Join me and we can run a galaxy populated by robots. However, Clank's best friend is a squishy. So he's like, bro, you wildin' right now. Organic lives matter too. Meanwhile, Ratchet is met by the robot Nefarious and to replace Clank, Clunk. They continue their mission as usual, but Ratchet slowly notices that something is off with them. Their quest leads them to find out where Nefarious' ship is, so Quark, Ratchet, and Clunk set out to ambush him. Unfortunately, this was all a trap. Nefarious had a ship to self-destruct with the boy still on it. Quark tells him to head to the shuttle without him, because he has to retrieve something he can't leave without. However, when they get to the ship, Clunk is like, man, fuck that dude Quark. He ain't even a real hero anyway. Then activates the shuttle to leave as the place blows up. I mean, I don't see the problem with Clunk's decision, but that's just me. Anyways, they had their funeral for Quark or whatever. Then Ratchet finds out that Nefarious plans to attack Metropolis next. They head to the city and here, Ratchet finds the real Clank. He realizes that Clunk was just an evil replica. Then after taking him down, he saves his true best friend. However, with Quark gone, the galaxy is in panic. Everyone is just assuming that Nefarious is gonna win this war. Hell, the president even accepts defeat. Bro, who puts you in office? Ratchet is not trying to give up though. He and Clank decide to check out Nefarious' ship wreckage to try and find exactly what Quark was looking for before he died. There they find out that Quark is actually alive. Damn it. They find out where Quark is hiding and demand that he explain himself. And this guy straight up says, bro, I'm not trying to die. After hearing this, Ratchet tells him off, then dips to go solve the nefarious problem with his boy Clank. He and the rest of the good guys then find out that Nefarious' weapon of mass destruction, the Bio Obliterator, is in Koros, and the Doctor's next target is Ratchet's home planet. Damn, they always messing with my boy's home, son. The duo makes their way to Koros, then destroy the weapon, but they find out that Nefarious is another one in Mylon, so they head over there to take him down, but the Doc uses the Bio Obliterator against them. When all hope seems lost, freaking Captain Quark flies in to save them, and together they defeat Nefarious. What? Quark saved the day? Yup, now Nefarious is stuck on an asteroid in the middle of nowhere. However, now with the robotic doctor defeated, our heroes celebrate by watching the debut of the Agent Clank movie. I love how Clank is out here making mad bread being famous while also saving the galaxy. Shit is hilarious. Now we move on to the fourth game in the Ratchet and Clank series, Ratchet Deadlocked. Notice how it just says Ratchet this time though, that's important. Insomniac was trying to go for something darker here with the story and you'll see that as we get into it. We begin with Ratchet, Clank, and a friend from the last game, Al, chilling in the starship Phoenix. This was the old ship of the president's daughter, Sasha. Sasha hits them up and informs them of their new antagonist. It's some dude named Gleeman Vox. He's kidnapping heroes and forcing them to fight in an illegal show called Dead Zone. However, before they're able to do anything about it, they get kidnapped themselves. Ratchet wakes up in some special armor, and he's told that he now has to fight in Dread Zone, or else the deadlock callers and him and his friends will kill them. With that, our boy does what he does best, dish out the hands. He fights through the Dread Zone, continuously breaking records and expectations. The competition even gets him hype. As y'all can tell, Ratchet loves him some danger, so this kind of stuff is right up his alley. Al and Clank, on the other hand, are trying to get the hell out of this place. So while Ratchet does his business, they try to find a way to take this place down. Ratchet continues 
making the dread zone his bitch. He even gains the attention of Vox. He starts getting merchandise made and the shit starts selling out. Damn, Clank, I think your boy's trying to be like you. Eventually, Ratchet ends up going up against a hero that he used to look up to, Ace Hardlight. He beats him, but the former hero warns Ratchet about how Vox can corrupt a person. He needs to be careful before he lets the hubris and fame get to him. After the fight, Vox calls Ratchet in and invites him to become the star of Dread Zone permanently. If he joins in endless money and stardom await him. However, Ratchet remembers what Hardlight told him about getting corrupted by Vox. He denies the offer, so Vox throws him into a challenge that is mathematically unwinnable, the Ghost Station. Ratchet clears him like the boss he is, and around this time, Clank and Al figured out how to free themselves along with all the other kidnapped heroes. They free Ratchet and give him access to the control level of the Dread Zone station, and he heads out to save the captives. But Vox saw this coming, so he set up a counter strat. He rigs the whole station to blow up and frames it as a Dread Zone special in order to get the best ratings he's ever gotten. The villains in this series really be out of their mind, bro. For real! Nobody told you to blow up your station filled with innocent people. It's all good though, because with the help of Ratchet and Al, he frees all the Dread Zone captives and beats Gleeman. Then he and his friends get the hell out of there and leave Gleeman to die in the explosion. Thus taking us out of the PS2 era of this franchise and into the PSP era. These games don't really mean much to the series though, so we'll be summing them up as quickly as possible. The first in the set of the PSP releases is Size Matters. This game was actually not developed by Insomniac, but High Impact Games. Funny enough, these guys actually worked on that Jack and Daxter game that just didn't live up to the series. In Size Matters, Ratchet and Clank go on vacation because they're tired of almost dying. Deadlocked must have been the tipping point. However, on their vacation, they're interrupted by a race of geniuses named Technomites, who are trying to create a clone army of Ratchets. I mean, not gonna hold you? That's not a bad plan. Yeah, but the galaxy doesn't need a bunch of evil Ratchets running around, when just one is able to do the impossible. Deadass though, what is up with Ratchet? This dude is just badass as fuck, and he looks like a Pokemon. Are Lombaxes just built different? Question for the day. Anyways, Ratchet and Clank ain't down for the Clone Wars, so they do their good guy thing and beat the Technomites for being crazy. Then we move to the second PSP game in the set, Secret Agent Clank. And this was also developed by High Impact Games. This game is literally an episode of Secret Agent Clank, so technically it's not canon because none of this actually happens, but according to Doji, we still gotta mention it. Hey, nobody said it wasn't canon, so we still gotta talk about it. So in Secret Agent Clank, Clunk returns and plants a mind control device on Ratchet. This forces him to commit a bunch of crimes and get arrested. So Secret Agent Clank does his spy shit, bodies Clunk, then clears Ratchet's name. Now was that so bad, conscience? Don't talk to me like I'm a fucking child. Yes, it was that bad. Anyways, this takes us out of the PSP era of the series and into the PS3 era, or the Future Saga. The first game in this section being Ratchet and Clank Future, Tools of Destruction. The story begins with Ratchet, chilling in his new home on Kerwan. However, like a a lot of the previous games, his chill time gets disturbed by someone asking for help. This time is Captain Dumbass Quark. Heavily armed robotic commandos are attacking the planet, and he desperately needs Ratchet and Clank to carry him, even though this guy was apparently the greatest hero in the galaxy. The duo heads to the city to do their thing, but they're stopped by the leader of the invaders, Emperor Percival Tachyon. This guy is the one survivor of the Kragmites, an alien race who ruled their galaxy with an iron fist. However, ages ago, they were defeated and wiped out by the Lombaxes. To avenge his people, Emperor Percival formed a new army and reclaimed the galaxy by first wiping out the Lombaxes. Now he wants to kill Ratchet, the last Lombax in the universe. So, wait, does that mean Angela Cross is dead? Oh, shit. I mean, if Ratchet's the last Lombax in the universe, then maybe. Damn, they really kill off Angela like that? That's crazy. Well, after hearing the Emperor say that he's out to get Ratchet, the duo dip and escape to the Polaris galaxy. Almost all this place has been conquered by Tachyon, so maneuvering through the galaxy is pretty hard, but Clank is in special help this time. Throughout their journey, he's met by these mysterious beings named Zoni. They guide him and give him a bunch of power-ups when he needs them, but they can only be seen by Clank. With the help of the Zoni, Clank finds out about the now desolate home planet of the Lombaxes, Fastoon. The partners head there, and Ratchet finds a ship that he just has to repair. Once done, they find out it's a sentient ship named the Phileon. Son, if all these Lombaxes were just as strong as Ratchet and were smart enough to create sentient ships, Build different might just be an understatement. Yeah, all of a sudden that Jack versus Ratchet death battle is starting to make a lot more sense. Anyways, while Ratchet and Clank are out here discovering more about the Lombaxes, they find out that Quark switched sides like he usually does. He was too much of a coward to fight Tachyon and his army, so now he's the Emperor's confidant. What a pussy! Then as their quest continues, they learn that Tachyon is looking for something known as the Lombax Secret. It's a special weapon that was used to eliminate the Kragmite Empire. The duo then agrees to go look for it, thus turning this into a race to find the ultimate weapon. Their first stop, 
Apogee Space Station, the former home of the famous explorer Max Apogee. Here they find Talwin Apogee, Max Apogee's daughter. She notices that Ratchet is a Lombax and decides to join forces with him. Her father used to research Lombax history and came across a special Lombax artifact years ago. And fun fact, after doing some more research, I found out that this guy saved Angela from Tachyon. Apparently when everything was happening and deadlocked, Max swooped in and rescued her from the Emperor's forces. So Angela Cross is alive, guys. We don't have to worry. She'll just probably never get screen time again. Anyways, Ratchet and Clank realize the Lombax artifact could be a clue. So together with Talwin, they track it to the pirate captain Slag ship. Once they find the artifact, it shows them a hologram of the planet Rikon 5, their next destination. On this planet, they discover that the special weapon's name is the Dimensionator, and they also find out that it didn't eradicate all the Kragmites. Apparently that world vaporizing weapon doesn't exist. This leads them to the Iris computer, where they get a whole bunch of lore. The Dimensionator was used to banish the Kragmites to another dimension entirely. The reason why Tachyon is still here is because the Lombaxes later found him in a frozen egg. They raise him like one of their own, but once Tachyon found out about how the Lombaxes did his people, he set out on his galaxy conquering and Lombax destroying quest. The plot exposition ends with the computer telling them that Max Apogee relocated the Dimensionator to Kerchu City. Then Iris shuts down. With that, Ratchet sets his sights on Kerchu City. But Clank hit him with that logic. A device like the Dimensionator is way too dangerous for anyone to wield. They need to destroy it. Plus, the Zoni told him that their friend Talwin is in trouble on Zordum. Hearing this annoys Ratchet, since he still has no idea who these Zoni are. But he can't leave a new friend hanging, so they save Talwin first, then head to Kerchu City. After throwing the hand, they find the secret device, but it's taken by Captain Slag. The duo then finally take care of the pirate to get it back, only for Quark to come in and steal it himself. He's trying to be a hero again, and he thinks this is somehow helping. This man is stupid. And as you can probably guess, since Quark was working for Tachyon, the alien takes the device for himself and brings the Kragmites back into this dimension. With that, the Kragmites begin invading the galaxy starting with Meridian City. Then the Zoni warn Clank that Tachyon is heading to Fast 2 next, and this time Ratchet believes him. Because if he listened to Clank in the first place and just destroyed the Dimensionator when they found it, none of this would have happened. Ratchet, Clank, and the friends he made in the game then head for the Lombax whole planet. There, they're finally confronted by Tachyon, and he reveals that the Lombaxes actually escaped to another dimension. The only two who stayed back were Ratchet's father, the guardian of the Dimensionator, and Baby Ratchet. However, when Tachyon came for the smoke, Ratchet's father pulled a Jor-El and sacrificed himself to send Ratchet to the Solana Galaxy. Now that Ratchet knows the truth, Tachyon offers him a deal. He opens a portal to the dimension where all the Lombaxes ran off to, and tells our boy that if he just walks away now, he can live with the rest of his people in a separate dimension. The offer seems enticing at first, but he remembers what Clank said about how dangerous his device is. He states that no one will be safe if Tachyon keeps the Dimensionator. Then he and Clank fight Tachyon and send him to another dimension. With the galaxy saved again, Ratchet disables the Dimensionator. Then he and the squad head home. But while Clank and Ratchet have a little heart to heart, the Zoni appear out of nowhere and just kidnap Clank, telling him that he needs to come home. And boom, the game ends just like that. They then pulled an MCU on us. Imagine having to wait for the new game to come out after seeing this. Yeah, Insomniac was smart for this one. However, now we're in the second game in the Future Saga, Ratchet and Clank Future, Quest for Booty. This game was really short and has to do with Ratchet's search for Clank right after he gets kidnapped. He finds out that the Zoni have Clank held in the Brigus Nebula, but he's been damaged due to the overexposure of Zoni energy. So the Zoni hired Dr. Nefarious to repair him. Ratchet's like, welp, Def can't have that. Then he books it to save his boy, taking us to the third game in the Future Saga. Ratchet and Clank Future are crack in time. We begin with Nefarious and Clank inside a Zoni construct in the center of the universe known as the Great Clock. This thing is responsible for keeping time stable throughout the universe. Nefarious has betrayed the Zoni and is now trying to hack into Clank's brain for info on something called the Orvis Chamber. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the galaxy, Ratchet is accompanied by dumbass Quark on his mission to save Clank. Why would he allow this dude to follow him? He probably needs a decoy. The two of them land on Quantos and realize that time acts hella weird on this planet. Then they're met by Lord Flint Vorsalon, a mercenary working under Nefarious. He confuses Ratchet for another Lombax named Alistair Azimuth, then kidnaps Quark because the captain thought he could dish out the hands. While Ratchet goes to save him, Clank is met by his father, Orvis, in his subconscious. Yeah, Clank has a father, guys. Even though he was born in that robot factory in the Solana Galaxy, his soul was actually made here in the Great Clock. His father explains that he is one of the Zoni. They have the power to manipulate time. He created the Great Clock eons ago, but now it's time for Clank to take up the role as caretaker of the construct. This is why the Zoni were helping him in Tools of Destruction. So imagine that, y'all. First we have Ratchet, who is just broken. Now we have Clank, who's able to mess with time. 
OP ass team, son. After Clank learns his true purpose from his father, he and a robot he meets named Sigmund starts repairing the gray clock from the damage that Nefarious has done to it. Moving back to Ratchet's part of the story, he's confronted by the other Lombax he was confused for, Alistair. The guy starts off hostile, but he notices that Ratchet is a splitting image of his father, Kaden. Alistair and Kaden were childhood friends, so he quickly warms up to Ratchet. Then they work together to find a way to talk to Clank. But we're not gonna hold you. Alistair is looking pretty sus. Didn't all the other Lombaxes escape to another dimension? Why is he here? On top of that, he's adamant on reaching the Great Clock for his own reasons. His motives and backstory are questionable, and Ratchet notices it too. After pestering the general for a while, he finally reveals his dark past. Years ago, after the great war between the Lombaxes and the Kragmites, Alistair was desperate for a way to keep the galaxy safer. They won a tough war, yeah, but what about future wars? This is when a mystery inventor came in claiming to be able to solve his problem. Against Caden's better judgment, Alistair decided to listen to the mysterious inventor and gave him full access to his people's technology. It turns out that this inventor was actually Tachyon. He used Lombax tech to create the army he used to force the Lombaxes out of this dimension. Being the one responsible for this, Alistair was not allowed to move dimensions with his people. He was forced to stay here and live with the guilt of being the person who screwed over their race. Damn, that's actually pretty sad. Yeah, and now he wants to use the Great Clock to undo all of that. And that's pretty dumb. Messing with time never goes well. But I guess Alistair would rather play with fire. Either way, they finally get in touch with Clank. But instead of sending them his location, he begs them to go to Xanifar to save his father. Earlier, while spying on Sigmund, because he's secret agent Clank, he found out that his father went to the planet Xanifar about two years ago, but he never came back. He's worried about what might have happened to him. So he plans on opening a time portal on Xanifar so Ratchet can go back two years and find out what happened to Orvis. Ratchet is mad confused about this plan. Now he has to go back in time? But Clank is his boy, and we all know what happened last time Ratchet didn't listen to Clank. So he heads to the planet. Our hero heads through the portal and finds Nefarious torturing Orvis for more information about the Orvis chamber. However, Orvis teleports out the place while Nefarious is interrogating him. Welp, another dead end. Nah, not really, because Ratchet does find out that Clank is the only person who's able to access the Orvis chamber. Looks like his friend is way more important than he thought. Anyways, after throwing a grenade at past Nefarious, which leads to a cool scene where present day Nefarious gets damaged, Ratchet heads back to the present himself and continues on his quest for Clank. He reunites with Alistair, who got captured while he was in the past, then the story moves back to Clank. Thanks to Sigmund, he's accessed the Orvis chamber, but Nefarious is spying on him this whole time, so he uses his chance to kidnap him again. Then, the doctor sends a distress signal to Ratchet as a trap, but he must have forgotten that our boy has help. The two Lombaxes storm the place where Clank is being held, then save him from the evil clutches of Nefarious. And with that, the two friends are finally reunited. About time, I was getting tired of switching the story around so much. But now that everyone is together, conflict hits the group. Alistair is still pressed on using the Great Clock to turn back time and save the Lombaxes, but Clank has gone through my time space academia. He tells the general that this construct is not meant to be a time machine. Using it for that purpose could cause the whole universe to tear apart. And Ratchet agrees with his friend. Yeah, he wants to save his race, but not if it risks the universe getting destroyed. They then focus on the matter at hand, Dr. Nefarious and his crazy ass, but Alistair leaves him after hearing their thoughts on the Great Clock. He doesn't give a fuck about causing a crack in time. <laughs> get it? Cause it- Yes, yes, we get your corny ass joke. Now please continue with what you were saying. Ah, yeah. He doesn't care if he causes a crack in time. He's trying to bring his people back. So he's pretty upset right now, but this isn't the last time we'll see him. The duo has straight for Nefarious' space station and reunite with <sighs> Captain Quark. Surprisingly, with his help, they infiltrate the station and find Nefarious. Here, he finally admits his plan. My man wants to use the Great Clock to give all antagonists a do-over. He wants to create a timeline where the heroes always lose. So he wants to watch the space-time continuum burn. Yeah, pretty much. Well, Nefarious is obviously out of his mind, so Ratchet and Clank give him the business. Then Alistair returns to save them from the crashing space station. Sadly, though, this save was for selfish reasons. The General brings them to the Great Clock with him, and he once again goes on about how the Great Clock can save the Lombaxes. However, Ratchet's like, bro, can you chill? The past stays in the past. We could find the Lombaxes the right way later. Then he begins saying an emotional farewell to Clank. One thing we didn't really get into within the story was the fact that Clank had to leave after all this. He's now the caretaker of the Great Clock. That's a heavy responsibility he can't just pass up to chill with his friend. But this story doesn't end here. Alistair is pissed right now. Out of anger, he kills Ratchet. Wait, what? Then he goes for Clank, but Clank uses the Great Clock to go back in time and save Ratchet. 
Now it's Alistair versus our heroes. Alistair maneuvers past the duo, then gets to the control of the clock. He apologizes one last time to Ratchet, then activates the switch. With that, Clank and Ratchet jump the general and manage to defeat him. Unfortunately, Alistair's actions can be reverted though. Ratchet tries moving the switch back, but it breaks. At this point, General is screaming at them like, why isn't it working? And Ratchet's like, cause it's not a time machine, you dickhead. So this makes Alistair finally understand why this plan was just wrong. Then he sacrifices himself to revert the clock's activation. After all that craziness, Clang decides that he's not cut off for being the caretaker of the Great Clock. He doesn't feel right leaving Ratchet when he hasn't found his family yet. So the game ends with him giving the duty of caretaker to Sigmund and joining Ratchet to fly back home. This moves us to not a game or a movie, but a comic book. There was a six issue comic book series written by Insomniac scriptwriter TJ Fixman. In this series, Ratchet and Clank face off against some dude named Artemis Zog. This guy is a big fan of Ratchet, but he's a crazy thief who's salty because he didn't get elected as president of the Polaris Galaxy. You know who did get elected though? Captain fucking Quark. Why am I not surprised? So Ratchet, Clank, and some old friends including Talwin and Sasha team up to take down the criminal. Now we break off into two games that once again, don't have much to do with the overarching plot. But hey, they're in the canon so we gotta show them some love. The first is Ratchet and Clank All For One. This is a co-op game developed by Insomniac Games where Ratchet, Clank, Quark, and Dr. Nefarious are left stranded on a hostile planet. Though they have an antagonist with them, they agree to work together and eventually get off the planet while destroying a weapon that was meant to eradicate the universe. And after the adventure, it's revealed that Nefarious actually grew a soft spot for the good guys thanks to their time together. Too bad he's still evil though. The next game we have in this unimportant pair is Ratchet and Clank Full Frontal Assault. Also developed by Insomniac, this game begins with Quark losing his title as president. Thank God. With his newfound free time, he decides to revive the Q-Force, inviting Ratchet and Clank to join. Then as if on cue, a random supervillain appears, threatening them with the smoke. It's revealed later that the supervillain is actually a fanboy, so they arrest his ass. And with that, we've gotten past the last filler arc of the Ratchet and Clank series. Now back into the main lore. We move to the game Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus. At this point in the timeline, Ratchet, Clank, Talwin, and her two robotic companions, Kronk and Zephyr, are all part of the Polaris Defense Force. The titular duo are currently escorting the criminal, Vendra Prague, to the Vartax detention facility to serve her quintuple life sentence. Damn, what does she do? She went to detect Pollux Industries and kidnap its CEO, so Ratchet is taking her in, but Vendra's brother Nefton enters the scene and breaks her out. The attack leads to the ship getting destroyed. Luckily, Ratchet and Clank make it out though. But Kronk and Zephyr didn't make it. After they land on the planet of Yerik, they call up Talwin and tell her the bad news. Yo, so remember that criminal Vendra? Yeah, she gone. She gone gone. And your boys, they dead, bro. Talwin is hurt by the news, so she asks Ratchet and Clank to head back to Meridian City. Vendra is a psycho killer, and she doesn't want her only friends left possibly dying against this new threat too. However, Ratchet puts the death of the bots on himself. He's like, sorry Talwin, I'm not out here trying to be safe. There's a super powered murderer on the loose. I can't have that. Then he and Clank head out to do their hero thing. Later, while spying on the Prog siblings, they find out that these guys are from the Netherverse. They created a discount dimensionator and they plan on using it to bring back all the Nethers including their leader, Mr. I. This makes Ratchet feel a little sympathetic towards the siblings because they honestly just want to be reunited with their people. They're kind of like him. This change from vengeance to understanding makes Ratchet try talking it out with the siblings first. But that leads to nothing. Nefton tries to fire Ratchet, so Ratchet bodies him. Then Vendra comes in and uses her Kirkland brand dimensionator to bring the Nethers and Mr. I into this dimension. However, Mr. I just wants to get in. He doesn't actually care about Vendra or her brother. He betrays them and slaps Vendra back into the Netherverse. Ratchet and Clank then book it because they are in no way prepared for this fight. Then Nefton switches sides and helps them get away. I see you have learned from your foolishness, Mr. Prog. The guy tells our heroes to meet him on planet Thram. Once they arrive there, Nefton shares his idea with them. They need to steal the original Dimensionator from the Intergalactic Museum of History and use it to bring Venger back and exile the Nethers. Ratchet is down for the plan, but he needs Nefton to promise that they'll turn themselves in afterwards. They can't just get away with the wild shit they did. The gorilla reluctantly accepts, then they go rob the museum. They nab the Dimensionator, but Mr. I begins attacking the city. So Clank jumps into the Netherverse to save Vendra, while Ratchet goes toe to toe with Mr. I. Once freed, Vendra works with everyone else to cast the Nethers back into their rightful place. After, Nefton makes good on his promise and turns both himself and his sister in. Ratchet and Clank then take a look at a now broken Dimensionator, and Ratchet is low-key tight that the thing is broken again. However, after thinking about it, he realizes that he's cool with not finding his family. He's happy here with all the friends that he made. It's time to let the Dimensionator go. Clank isn't completely convinced though. Plus, after meeting his father, he feels obligated to help Ratchet find his family. So he swipes the Dimensionator before the credits roll. Now we're in the last game in the series. Well, last game in the series so far. 
Ratchet and Clank ripped apart. This journey begins with our heroes being celebrated for their heroic deeds. Even though they haven't done a damn thing in years. They get a whole parade thrown for them and everything. Then when it comes time for our boys to give their speech, Clank gives a heartfelt monologue about how important Ratchet is to him. After the speech, he presents Ratchet with a fixed dimensionator. He fixed the one he swiped from the museum so now Ratchet can go looking for his people. But Nevarius pulls up out of nowhere. He steals a dimensionator, thinking that he's gonna find a dimension where he wins. This man will not quit, damn! Ratchet and Clank are like, well, can't have that. Then pursue Dr. Nefarious and stop him from using the device by shooting it. However, this leads to the thing malfunctioning and opening a whole bunch of rifts to different dimensions. Nefarious runs off looking for his ideal dimension while Ratchet gets thrown into a random rift. This leads to a dope set of scenes where Ratchet and Clank continuously get thrown from dimension to dimension. Like this shit looks amazing, fam. A few dimensions later, they end up in the dimension Nefarious was looking for. In here, he's known as Emperor Nefarious. Ratchet is right next to him though. He's tired of the bullshit and ready for the smoke. He goes in to attack the doctor, but the Dimensionator explodes in front of them. This causes multiple rifts to open within the dimension. After the explosion, Clank is up with one arm and stubby legs. This is when he's found by this dimension's ratchet, Rivet. She grabs Clank because he's trying to figure out what the hell just happened, then she dips. Meanwhile, Ratchet wakes up somewhere else wondering where Clank is. While traversing through the cyberpunk theme city, he spots Rivet with Clank running away from some hostiles. He questions why another Lombax is here, then watches as she flies away in her ship with his friend. So the plan right now is to figure out where the hell Rivet is going and how to follow her. He speaks to a robot and finds out about the resistance. Then she tells him that to go find Rivet, he needs to get to Sargasso. To do that, he's gotta speak to Phantom. Through Phantom, he breaks into Nefarious's base, only to find his Nefarious sitting in the throne of this dimension's Nefarious. My boy slaps him upside the head with his wrench, then steals one of his ships and books it to Sargasso. This brings us Rivet and Clank, who just made it to Sargasso. On the way to the planet, Clank told her everything that happened, but she didn't buy it. Another Lombax in this dimension? You buggin'. They make it to her workshop, and by looking through Clank's memory, she finds a proof in his claims. She agrees to help him fix his communicator so he can reach Ratchet. But before they do that, Clank enters a dimension between dimensions while messing with one of the rifts. Here he meets some dude named Gary, who seems to know a lot about time and how all this dimension stuff works. The guy that has a book telling him who Clank is. Together they fix the rift, then Clank rejoins Rivet, confused about what the hell just happened. Afterwards, they head to Zergi to get the part they need for Clank. One repair later, Clank gets in touch with this boy. The three speak about what the plan is now that they confirm they're on the same side, and Clank says that they're gonna have to build a new Dimensionator. He tells Ratchet about his friend Gary who should be on the planet Savali, so Ratchet heads over there. In the meantime, Clank and Rivet will go looking for the phase quartz used to power the device. And to make their journeys harder, our Nefarious puts a hit on Ratchet and Rivet. On Savali, Ratchet meets Gary for the first time and he directs him to the interdimensional archives. There his apprentice should be able to help him. He meets her and it's this dimension's Clank. She's like a female version of the robot with a bumblebee color scheme. I fucks with it. Unfortunately, she has no faith in herself and believes she's just a nuisance. However, Ratchet needs her to get started on his Dimensionator quest, so they agree to work together. And since this robot's original name is KT7461, Ratchet just calls her Kit to make things easier. I'm proud of them for not making it some other metal sound like clink or whatever. Yeah, that would have been lazy. Anyways, after entering the archive, Kit and Ratchet discover that the forge needed to create the Dimensionator is on Kadaro Station, the most secure outpost in the galaxy. With their location set, they leave the archive. However, they're met by an army of Nefarious' troops. This is when Kit shows why she has no faith in herself as a partner. As the attack continues and Ratchet begs Kit to leave the planet with him, she bids him farewell, then transforms into that crazy ass iron giant mode that Clank was able to use in previous titles. She wipes out the rest of the enemies, but almost kills Ratchet in the process. It's all good though, cause she transforms back before it's too late. After that confrontation, she explains to Ratchet how she was made to be a weapon and how no one is safe around her. However, Ratchet's like, Bro, you just took on a fleet of enemies by yourself. That's the type of power we need for something like this. Kit feels a little more confident after hearing Ratchet's praise, so she follows him to their next destination, on the Kadaro Station. Thus taking us to the other half of this story, Rivet's half. She and Clank make it to Blizzard Prime. They eventually find the Phase Quartz, but it breaks into the planet's mining drill. Rivet has a plan though. She's heard legends about someone on Torrin 4 they call the Fixer. If it's broken, then the Fixer can fix it. The duo makes their way to Torrin 4, and they easily find the Fixer. He's this giant Gundam in the middle of the area. But he don't work good right now, so Rivet and Clank have to fix him. After dealing with some space pirates, they make it to the Fixer's on switch. They turn the guy on and he attacks them instead of helping them. The Fixer has given up hope because of the amount of things that need to be fixed on this planet. But Clank calms him down using that secret agent charisma. The Fixer Gundam then fixes their face quartz. Then the duo goes in their merry way. Back to the other duo, Ratchet and Kit, 
they make it to Kadaro Station. With the help of a junk bot, they're able to get the forge restarted. Then they successfully create a brand new dimensionator. Task one complete. Now to reunite and get our nefarious the hell out of this dimension. The four of them meet at Xerxes, and the meeting is just as wholesome as you thought it'd be. Clank reunites with Ratchet and Kit joins with Rivet. Now everything is in order. Until they're stopped by Dr. Nefarious. He snatches the Dimensionator and does his normal gloating, but Rivet and Ratchet use this chance to get the jump on him and beat him once again. This is when the true antagonist shows up, the Nefarious from this universe. This dude immediately makes it clear that he is way more of a threat than the Nefarious we know. He even sounds different. Emperor Nefarious enters the scene like Ultron from Marvel and takes the Dimensionator for himself. Now you'd think he'd team up with the other version of him after this, right? There are two Lombaxes here. It seems like the best choice. Nah, he doesn't give a fuck about his weaker counterpart. He almost kills him until he decides to take him instead and head to Sargasso. Rivet can't have that, so she chases after them. Ratchet, on the other hand, is tasked with saving one of Rivet's friends named Quantum. Our hero heads to Ardolis and meets Captain Quantum, who is actually this universe's quirk. And I bet he's just as incompetent. Nah, son, Quantum is a bro. First of all, he's not an egomaniac like the quirk we know. He seems way more genuine. He hears that quirk is a hero and then inspires him. Second, when Nefarious shows up ready to body Quantum, the guy sacrifices himself to save Ratchet and Clank. They just met the guy and he's already pulling clutch moves. I fine, you've gained an ounce of my respect, Quantum. Anyways, the captain unfortunately gets sent to another dimension. So Ratchet and Clank just dip, angry that they just lost a new friend. Back to Ribbon and Kit, they're on their way to Sargasso. The two bond for a bit while on the trip, which is good because unlike Ratchet and Clank, they've been working alone all this time. Once on planet, they defend it from Nefarious's troops. However, the Emperor appears again and sends her into a pocket dimension. Here we get some more backstory on Rivet and Kit. Rivet explains how she lost her arm. She was infiltrating Emperor Nefarious's base, but a guard came in and caught her slipping. The attack permanently damaged her arm, so she built a new one. Sadly, what she doesn't know is that the bot who attacked so long ago was actually Kit. Yeah, remember when she said she was built to be a weapon? That was no joke. Before she joined Gary to keep track of the interdimensional archives, she was built to be a guard dog for Emperor Nefarious. She tries to tell Rivet the truth, but the Lombax gets too distracted trying to get out the pocket dimension. Once they make it out, they get a call from Ratchet and find out that Quantum got bodied by Nefarious. But they did manage to get a buck from him that will help them spy on the Emperor. With that, they decide to meet back at Xerxes to go over a new plan. But of course, something stops them along the way. They find out that the two Nefariouses are planning to conquer the rest of the universes. They're going to go to the interdimensional archive to steal the dimensional map. Two Nefarious is conquering multiple universes sounds like a terrible idea, so the squad decides to instead meet the Savali to get to the archives first. Ratchet and Clank make it there initially, but the archive is gone. Emperor Nefarious destroyed it. So Rivet and Kit go looking for Gary since he should know what's going on. They find him and luckily for them, Gary hid the map in a dimensional anomaly. Rivet informs Ratchet and together he and Clank head to the location of the anomaly. Once they make it, Clank does his thing and grabs the map. Unfortunately, Emperor Nefarious found them while he was away. He takes the map and throws a duo into some other dimension. This is when Rivet and Kit show up. Kit knows that they can't beat both Nefariouses, so she does something that she didn't want to do. She transforms into her Iron Giant Death Robot mode, revealing to Rivet that Kit was the one who destroyed her arm. The poor bot looks away from Rivet, then runs towards both the enemies. But Dr. Nefarious throws her into the same dimension that Ratchet and Clank got thrown into. Oh damn, it's been a while since the doc did something. Now Rivet is alone, but she's not about to give up yet. She single-handedly breaks into the prison Ratchet and everyone got sent to, and saves all of them. She even saves her fellow rebels. However, when they prepare to leave, Kit decides that she wants to head back home. She feels too dangerous and terrible for what she did to Rivet. And this sets Rivet off. She's like, so you just gonna run? For real? When there are universes in trouble? Aye, right, girl, whatever, do you. And then there were three. By the way, Ratchet and Clank are very sad about Kit not being here. Just thought y'all should know. The team makes it back to Xerxes, and there they're hit by an unsettling message by Emperor Nefarious. He lets the whole universe know that he's going to start his conquest of all the universes, but he says he's going to start with Ratchet's universe. And when he says this, our Nefarious is like, bro, what? Now the team knows where they have to go, and this time they have a whole militia behind them. Together, Ratchet, Clank, Rivet, and the rest of the Rebels head to Megapolis to finally put an end to Emperor Nefarious. They work together with the heroes from Ratchet's universe, stick down everything he throws at them. My man even summons a gun of his own. However, when he's backed into a corner, he opens a portal to multiple dimensions, bringing the full force of his army. All hope seems lost until Kit returns to fight the good fight. Working with Rivet, they pull through and defeat the Emperor once and for all. Then Ratchet opens up another portal, and our Nefarious does the finishing touch by kicking the Emperor into it. I'm guessing they'll arrest Dr. Nefarious when everything gets cleaned up. After the final battle, Rivet and Kit have a heart-to-heart. -heart. They apologize to each other and agree to stay together as partners from now on. 
and thus the galaxy-saving duo of another universe is born. Ratchet and Clank pull up with the Dimensionator ready to send them back home, but before they go, Ratchet asks to make a quick detour on the way. They never say where they're gonna go, but from how many times they mention it not only in this game, but in the past ones, they're probably headed to the dimension where all the Lombaxes are. Then the game ends, with our heroes receiving the fireworks they deserve for saving multiple universes. And that is the end of Ratchet and Clank's story, so far at least. I can very much see them making a sequel where Rivet and Ratchet actually do find the other Lombaxes, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. Overall though, I love this story. It was dead all jokes. I feel like Insomniac really accomplished what they set out to do on making this intergalactic buddy cop series, and the added wholesomeness in the entire story was just the icing on the cake. But with all that being said, end screen. What up fam and thank you guys so much for watching this long ass video. I feel like this is my greatest achievement as a YouTuber. Like this is the longest Honest Gaming History video I ever edited. So I really hope you enjoyed it because I had a really good time both writing it, editing it, recording it, all that. It was just a great time all around because Ratchet and Clank is just a wholesome, beautiful franchise. That's the best way I can put it. But if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button. It helps the channel out a lot. Let me know who else you want to see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History, because I have no idea who I want to cover next. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of me, and hit that bell to stay notified whenever I upload new content. Shout out to my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to make content like this. And shout out to my Gold Squad patrons, Curtis Clarkson, Dylan Boner, G Haven Sports Team, Graeme Lansboro, I'm sorry if I said that incorrectly, Iron Poet, Manga Fury, Storm X, Ex Zach, Zach Haji, and Michael Peagle. Appreciate you guys so much for your generosity. Without y'all, I do not know if I'll be able to continue making videos like this. But as you guys know, if you're unable to support the channel with your funds, you just getting this far, especially, especially for a long ass video like this, already means a lot. So thank you guys so much. With that being said, I am off this. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, take care, stay healthy out there. Black Lives Matter. And don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, fam.